How do you self-isolate in a shelter house? How do you self-isolate in a family of six to seven in a, in a two-bedroom? If you go out, we get coronavirus, but inside we have hunger, another serious disease that's going to kill us. When we talk to three people, they say, we understand that the lockdown is we understand that the coronavirus is a problem. Aber mit den Massnahmen, die eingeführt worden sind, riskiere ich mehr von der Armut zu sterben als äh, wegen dem Coronavirus. Letzte Woche haben wir uns angeschaut, ob und unter welchen Umständen die Massnahmen gegen die Corona-Krise in Europa eine Gefahr für die Demokratie könnten bedeuten könnten. An anderen Orten auf der Welt ist das Coronavirus quasi erst gerade angekommen. Und trotzdem zeigt sich jetzt schon, dass die Krise dort viel schlimmere Folgen haben könnte als hier bei uns. Ich habe mit vier Leuten geredet, die in ganz verschiedenen Ländern auf dem afrikanischen Kontinent leben. Everyone is making a banana bread. I'm like, what the hell is this bread? What the fuck is this banana bread? Uh, my name is Andy Lebuka. I'm 29 years old. I'm a Johannesburg-based photographer. And I've been in 12 days self-quarantine since coming back from Basel because I was asked from the residents and people to do that just to be safe. Okay, my name is Jessica Machingura. I'm a test driver. I'm at home. I'm in Harare. My name is Ben Blumenta. I'm the Landesdirektor from Helvetas in Wagadougou in Burkina Faso. So my name is Wani Michael. I am the executive director of the Catholic Organization. It's a youth-led organization in South Sudan. Und ich wollte von Ihnen zuerst mal wissen, wie Ihre Länder auf die Corona-Krise reagiert haben. Das Coronavirus ist also da am 8. März. Es war eines der ersten Länder in Afrika und es hat sehr schnell sehr sagen wir, wichtige Leute getroffen. Und die Regierung hat dann auch sehr schnell Massnahmen ergriffen. Obviously, the lockdown was put in place. Everyone should be at home. And so you can only go to the supermarket and come back. Otherwise, you'll be arrested. The first case of South Sudan, there was a person who worked for United Nations. And when the first case was announced, there was a lot of anxiety. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of hate speech where the citizens were saying that the United Nations has brought for them the virus have come to kill them. There is military and police to help control the people from breaking the rules. So we are locked in the houses. Sie tun mehr oder weniger ähnliche Maßnahmen ergreifen wie in Europa. Mit dem einzigen Unterschied, dass wir in Europa sind. Das heißt, die Leute sind bedeutend mehr davon betroffen. Was bedeuten die Maßnahmen denn konkret für die Bevölkerung? We spent years planning for my daughter's wedding. I think I sent you the invitation video. So, because of coronavirus, the venue told us that uh, there's no way we can go ahead with the wedding. So actually, uh, I've lost all my work. I, I kept on getting the emails like, oh, sorry, this job is on hold. Or sorry, we have to cancel the shoot. I'm relying on my personal savings to survive. Um, I don't know how long that will last. It's just easier for us to imagine in the Schweiz, the uh, lockdown, we work from the home house, or the is halt allenfalls sogar arbeitslos, man kommt from Schaden unterstützung. That's not da nicht. Punkt. Eine Verkäuferin, die am Tag zwei Kilo Hedepfel verkauft, das ist ihre Arbeit. Und wenn sie die zwei Kilo Hedepfel nicht verkauft und nicht auf dem Markt darf die verkaufen, dann hat sie kein Einkommen. If you go out, we get coronavirus, but inside we have hunger, another serious disease that's going to kill us. Und was macht er am meisten Sorgen? It's not hitting everyone the same. The poor black people are being hit the most than the affluent white people. I can tell you for a fact that South Sudan we only have four. Ventilators. You can't imagine a whole a whole country of 11 million people are only having four ventilators. Das well, Gesundheitssystem ist sehr schlecht darauf vorbereitet. Wir haben eine Handvoll von, von Ventilatoren im ganzen Land. There have been videos circulating of white people in the communities having braai in broad daylight, whereas uh, people in some communities they can be in their own yard and they're still being told to get into the house, which is quite crazy. This is a systematic uh, racism, you might call it. Uh, and I think it's been happening, though. I think it's just the pandemic, it's just, it highlights these things. The Wohnungen in the Häuser, where they live together, are very often gemeinsame Wohnungen, also Großfamilien. When they have a fall, or have, or have in the family, 
Das ist unmöglich, die Person zu isolieren. Uh, and also, police brutality, uh, the governor put up here from 8 p.m. If they get you walking around, they beat you up. Uh, in marginalized areas and the poor communities, they've put like heavy, heavy um, military and police. And from the videos we've been seeing online, they've been pretty much violent in the way they've been like engaging with the society. It's not like saying, hey, you know, the coronavirus is really a deadly virus, so can you please go home? But it's more like pointing a gun at you and saying, you better listen to me. Either you go uh, get in the van or something's going to happen to you. We have a big population of ID. Uh, this internal displacement comes uh, densely populated and, uh, and this poses a very serious risk on the fight of COVID-19. Also, they're depriving them their rights because the constitutional they're supposed to have their right to move out, but they have been locked down and they couldn't move out to go and face firewood and to go and also get something to eat. And we are so much concerned with the fact that these people might, I don't know, they be forced to leave these centers. And trotz all these problems, there are also creative solutions. Es gibt tatsächlich äh, verschiedene Initiativen, die versuchen, auch kreative Lösungen gegen das Coronavirus zu finden. Uh, some young people in, in South Sudan decided to be very creative. And what they did was that they recorded the whole message on coronavirus. For example, wash your hands for 20 seconds, social distancing, and this was recorded in, in various languages. So what they did was that they bought passports and they put these town systems loaded on a passport. And then they write. They ride with the basketball, they go to the residential area. So you just stand on the middle of the road and you play the message. We have this fab lab out there in Ouagadougou, who angefangen had material in 3D printer to print for the hospital. Sie versuchen Ventilatoren zu printen, versuchen Gesichtsmasken ähm, zu printen. Also, mit diesem Singing. Corona, the young battle, mind you, we like, we have to be careful. Corona. Making a lot of uh, music in local languages. Es gibt, dass die famose, auf Pflanzen basiert, antivirale ähm, Drogen, die in Benin entwickelt worden ist für AIDS. Apivirin, wo sie jetzt versucht, da zu testen, ob das auch könnte gegen Coronavirus eingesetzt werden. Es ist nicht so, dass wir da einfach irgendwo im hinteren Busch sind, sondern es wird tatsächlich auch versucht, mit, mit der Situation zu umgehen, mit der Möglichkeit, mit der, mit der Möglichkeit, die wir haben im Land. Bye bye. Bye, thanks so much. See you soon. Bye bye. Mach's gut. Bye, ciao, ciao. Also mich interessiert ehrlich gesagt immer ziemlich, was auf dem afrikanischen Kontinent so passiert. Und trotzdem habe ich das Gefühl, ich käme eigentlich recht wenig mit über. Wie geht es dir damit? Würde dich mehr Geschichten aus anderen Ländern auf unserem Kanal interessieren? Schreib mir es doch in die Kommentare. Nächste Woche geht es bei uns jetzt aber zuerst mal wieder um die Schweiz. Wir geben euch Tipps, wo und wie ihr euch freiwillig engagieren könnt während der Corona-Krise. Wenn ihr das nicht verpassen wollt, dann abonniert unseren Kanal.